<laughs> well, I'm glad that's over. <laughs> Aren't you? Yeah, I mean, it's a win for the Sooners. And you tip your hat to the offense, a record-setting night. In fact, a, a record-setting night for, for both teams. Get this, no um, FBS football game at any time, anywhere, has ever seen as many total yards as uh, the one in Lubbock on October 22nd, 2016. Nearly 1,720 combined yards. Are you kidding me? It's not even video game numbers, because video game numbers don't even get that high. Unless you're playing against somebody that just doesn't, doesn't, just doesn't know how to play a video game. Sooners had 864, Texas Tech about, I think, 855 to 156 total yards. They were only separated by eight yards. Um, if you were a fan of offense, this was your game. And if you were a fan, though, of a quality football game, of one where the defense can make plays, this game... The four hours plus that it took to finish this thing, it was agony for you. I mean, I mean, it's 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 before midnight right now. And this game just wrapped up, I think, 15, 20 minutes ago. Almost four and a half hours of sitting through that. Um, good and bad for this game for the Sooners. Obviously, the, the biggest good is you get the win. You're 4-0 in Big 12 play. I get it. You're 5-2 and overall. Um, you remain alive for a Big 12 championship, even though there's still a lot of work left to be done which we'll get into in a second, too. But Baker Mayfield, record-setting night, a sweet return to Lubbock, place where, of course, he began his career. Of course, you had the Trader shirts out, courtesy of the Texas Tech fans. They were sporting them in numerous numbers, trying to be a distraction for Baker. But Baker tonight wasn't going to be distracted. In fact, he set a school record for most touchdown passes in the game with seven. Breaking Landry Jones' mark, which uh, Landry had set uh, on two different occasions in his career, where he threw for six TDs. And um, not getting too far from the subject, but I think I think that Landry play tomorrow for the Steelers against the uh, Patriots. I don't think Ben Ben's going to be able to go for uh, Pittsburgh. So I think uh, yeah, I think I think Landry might be playing tomorrow um, in a late game on CBS um, on Sunday against New England. So Landry still in the league, still uh, still collecting a paycheck, and we'll see you tomorrow if he can earn it. Um, but getting back to Baker Mayfield, a sensational night for him. Um, being a leader out there, we're over 500 yards throwing. Of course, I know it was against a bad uh, Red Raider defense, but you know he had to, you know, be able to lead his team in a not not an easy place to win. You know, because in the past we've talked about how um, that stadium, you know, in the South Plains has been a, a practical shop of horrors for the Sooners. It was in the 2000s. Um, only went in there um, a couple of times uh, during the 2000s. Um, but it's been sweeter for them this decade. That's now three wins in a row in Lubbock for the Sooners. Uh, but this one did not come easy, but Baker Mayfield and the offense did their part. So I give it up to the offense. Um, this had the opportunity of being a high yardage, high point night, and they answered it with 66 points and 864 yards of total offense. And they needed every single yard and every single point just to get out of the South Plains with the win, which they got. Um, but Mayfield was sensational. Joe Mixon was his go-to guy. Um, Mixon, all around tonight, accounting for just a plethora of offensive yards, almost 400 yards of total offense for uh, Joe Mixon. Enjoy him now because he's going to the NFL. I'm not just saying that because of tonight, but I think we all know, even before this game, that uh, he's NFL ready. He's a sophomore on, on the um, – in your program, but of course, he's been with the program about three years. Remember, he got suspended in year number one. So after this year, he would have been with the program three years. He can go to the NFL, and I think he's gone. Uh, Mixon tonight, three touchdown receptions, including a pivotal third down catch. He caught with the right hand. He didn't even need his left hand to catch it. In fact, he didn't even need his left hand to secure the ball. And he goes streaking down the sideline, and nobody wearing a Red Raider jersey was going to be able to bring him down. Um, that was one of his three touchdown receptions. He had two touchdown runs. Um, by the way, 114 yards receiving, 263 yards on the ground for Joe Mixon, a star with a capital S. And D.D. Westbrook over 200 yards receiving and had a pair of touchdowns. And even you know, Nick Basquin, the Norman North standout, the walk-on, had a touchdown, had 77 yards receiving. I thought he played terrific. Mayfield, he's going to have one sore arm. I can promise you that come, uh, come tomorrow when he wakes up. Um, it was used a lot against seven TD passes. Great game for him and for the offense.
who basically uh, was the more balanced of the two. I mean, Texas Tech got almost all of their yardage through the air, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, but tonight for the Sooners, 314 rushing yards, 545 through the air, 864 overall. And it was like a tennis match. It was exactly like I said on the matchup show earlier this week, my pregame show, when I said that the Sooners, they were going to have to treat it like a tennis match. In other words, they knew Tech was going to get some points. The Sooners had the match and eventually would have to, you know, be able to come up with a stop so that way they can get a break point, if you will. And, and for the second half, you know, when they got a critical stop early in that third quarter um, and OU got the ball back and was able to go up by 12, and, or in this case 13, they were able to, even though Tech would score touchdowns to match them, Tech was never able to get the ball with a chance to tire or go ahead in that second half. And the offense deserves just about all the credit for that, for making sure that Tech never got that opportunity. That the OU offense, and this is another thing too, Baker Mayfield, no interceptions. No interceptions, no opportunities for, for Tech to, to get away with anything cheap. Um, so, But Mayfield really took control of this game from the OU perspective and made sure that OU would not fall behind in which – they got the lead and kept it for good right before halftime with that big touchdown uh, right before the half. That's good for OU. If the Sooners are serious, though, about being a Big 12 contender to overcome Baylor and to overcome West Virginia, the two other undefeateds in the conference, I know people are thinking, well, the Sooners are going to win, okay, because they're Oklahoma, because they're defending Big 12 champions, because they got Bob Stoops. Well, with all due respect to what I just told you, unless something changes defensively, I'm going to give you three words. It won't happen. OU's defense tonight was embarrassing. To give up 854 freaking yards and to give up over 700 of those yards through the air with virtually no ground game at all. So OU can't say, well, we didn't know it was coming to have pathetic tackling, and to give up third and 20, third and 25, fourth and 20, what, however many yards Texas Tech needed for a first down, they were moving those chains, especially on third down. How do you allow a team with no ground game to go 20 of 25 on third down tries? Mike Stoops should be embarrassed. They couldn't even tackle. And look, you might say, well, they had coverage issues too. Well, that's been the case against any good passing team that the Sooners have faced this year. The tackling tonight was pathetic. And there were a couple of stops, but also too, the fact that Patrick Mahomes had 88 passing attempts. And you might be thinking, well, Texas Tech plays an offense that you just can't stop. Bull crap. Bull crap. Okay, stop might be a strong word, but contain. West Virginia held them to 17 points the previous week in Lubbock. So don't tell me you can't contain an offense like that. When you're giving up third and 20, third and 25, fourth and 20, fourth and 15, when Texas Tech is in high yardage situations, and you tell me that you cannot come up with a play to force punts and keep their chains moving and keep the crowd in the game because Tech is constantly converting and moving the ball. It didn't matter what, what the Sooners had up their sleeve tonight defensively. For the most part, it was worthless. Strategy-wise, it was worthless. The game tonight didn't need to be this stressful for Sooner Nation. And this is not coming from a spoiled Sooner fan. This is coming from a Sooner fan that wants to see some damn defense. You're giving up 59 points. This is Oklahoma. It's not East Handkerchief State. East Popcorn University. It's Oklahoma. And you're telling me that giving up 854 yards just by the win is acceptable? No. West Virginia will absolutely cream Oklahoma in mid-November if this continues. And even Baylor can come to Norman and win. 
Just because this may not be the Baylor, but hey, Baylor is still undefeated. West Virginia is undefeated. Both in league and in overall. I think as Sooner fans, you have a right to feel extremely humiliated by how that defense performed or lack thereof. Because it was an eyesore all night long. The, the offense, I felt sorry for them because they did more than their part. And do I expect a shutout? No. I don't even expect 17 points per se. But I do expect a star effort, and I do expect some execution. It's the University of Oklahoma, it's the defending Big 12 champions, and the defense tonight, to say it looked like a train wreck would be kind. I mean, it looked like an earthquake aftermath to me. Now, good news for the Sooners, hey, you got two awful teams coming up. You know, the next two games, even with this defense, shouldn't be a problem. You got Kansas um, Saturday night, 6 o'clock, in case you didn't know, October 28th. Five days later, national TV game, uh, November the 3rd, um, against Iowa State on the road. So you're playing the uh, two Big 12 bottom feeders, Right there. You got to get some stuff fixed, okay? Because the next three games, the ones you close out your season with, regular season-wise, are against three damn good offenses. In Baylor, West Virginia, who's looking scarier every week. And, of course, you get a couple of weeks to get prepared for Bedlam against the Cowboys at home in early December. Oh, yeah, by the way, did you know that Houston – as well as Ohio State, both lost on Saturday to unranked teams. Houston lost to a team that's probably best known for the death penalty, SMU. And Ohio State lost to a team that should have gotten the death penalty this decade after the Zendusky and Joe Paterno crap that happened at Penn State. So you think Oklahoma's schedule this year has looked very impressive? Well, after tonight, not as impressive as you might have thought. Yeah, Buckeyes lose. And Houston loses badly to SMU. One of those nights of college football. Oklahoma gets the win, and the offense did more than their part. But no defense. I, I guess that's what we've come to expect now in college football. You know, basically, 66-59. If that's going to be the norm, and if that's the way college football is going to be in the 21st century, then the game sucks. Sooners get the win, but, boy, defensively, they made me reach for the Maalox. <laughs> Boomer Sooner.